See that picture? It's a baby. Cute, isn't it? Well, we blurred the face to protect his identity because we've got bad news. You're looking at a bigot. According to a new pair of scientific papers, your baby is one too. Those studies say all babies are racist, even when they're just six months old. For real, it says that. Researchers at the University of Toronto in Canada found that when babies hear happy music played, they stare longer at the pictures of their own race, while sad music makes them linger on the pictures of other races. Dr. Kang Lee of the University of Toronto was the lead researcher for these studies, and he joins us now. Dr. Lee, thanks for coming on. Rather, Dr. Thank so, you for having me. Thank you. Um, so, pardon my skepticism, kind of hard to believe that babies are bigots. Are you sure? I'm not saying babies are bigots. I'm just looking at whether or not the babies are already biased to associate certain kind of emotions with own race versus the other race. Uh, one of the things that we discovered, however, is that three months old are not. So they don't associate negative emotions with own race or other race individuals. And however, after about six months of life, the babies start to show some biases. So when we show them the, the music that uh, is happy, they tend to look longer at their own race individuals over uh, other race individuals. So they go bad at six months. Boy, it just seems so early. What's the punishment for that at six months? Well, I don't think there's any punishment for it. I think the, the reason for this is actually because when most of us who are, who are born into monoracial families, we tend to see only the faces of our own race individuals. And because of this, we really have very limited experience with the other race individuals. So one of the things that when we develop, we tend to show um, uh, novelty um, uh, biases, that is, we feel uncomfortable with things that are new, unfamiliar. So because of this, and when they see other race individuals and they are not familiar with, they, they tend to associate some negative valences with them. So this is the beginning of it. Now, I'm not a social scientist or a researcher, but it, it seems unlikely that you could measure the racial attitudes of a three-month-old beyond, like, my diaper's dirty kind of thing or I want some milk. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say, you know, so the way to do it is to see what kind of things we associate with or whether or not we tend to learn. Uh, the babies like to learn from uh, own race individual or other race in individual. For example, in the second study we did, we actually showed own race adults or other race adults teaching kids about what's going to come up. And in one condition, both of them are actually 100% correct. In this condition, babies don't care. Regardless of your own race or other race individuals, they learn from them. And when both of them are incorrect 100% of the time, and they don't want to learn from any of them. So babies are very, very smart. The question, the critical question is, when it's un un under uncertainty, that is, when both adults are 50% correct, what would the baby do? And we found that the babies would like to learn more from the own race individuals, treat them as if they are 100%, and then the other race individuals as if they are 100% uh, incorrect. So, so the, the, these are the biases, but I don't think these are the bigotry or this kind of racism uh, at play at this young age. I'm just saying that this is the basis that we may build up uh, with our experience, and then they diverge when we look at the own race and, uh, and other race individuals. I mean, from a non-expert point of view, this suggests that these attitudes are not learned behavior, but a product of evolutionary biology. But, you know, you, I guess you would know. I, as someone who covers politics, though, I'm pretty certain that your study is going to lead to new government programs and government control over babies. Do you think? I hope not. I want to say two things. The one thing I said is we are not predisposed, biologically predisposed to be racially biased. So this is what our findings are suggesting. So it seems to be that basically our early experience, if it's very exclusive, then we tend not to. Uh, tend to develop the early biases. So that's one thing. Another thing is, well, you know, I think it depends on parents, right, and educators, whether or not you want your kids to develop with biases. For example, you know, uh, uh, you could actually introduce your, your kids, babies, uh, to read storybooks that are depicting people from all over the world. And uh, I think that would help your child not have to see more individuals from different races, ethnicities, as well as expose them to different cultures. So I think you make your babies more worldly. So uh, in, in terms of government programs, I'm not quite sure. I think for parents, there's a good message from these studies. Uh -huh. I mean, call me cynical, but I have the feeling that this is going to justify a whole new range of intrusions into people's family lives, where all of a sudden government regulators and 
do-gooders and people with guns are going to, are going to rearrange the family in the interest of promoting tolerance or whatever the no, justification No, 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 no. I, I think you get it totally wrong. There, there's some, the I don't think I do. Studies I don't are showing think that I do. The, the, early experience, the early experiences are very important. We know this from, uh -huh. you know, from many, many studies, right? So early experiences are very, very important. Right. So the, the idea is that you show your babies experiences, and the more experience they, are, they have, the better they're going to be. So different languages, different uh, people from different races. I don't think the government has anything to do at this point, because this is early at childhood. Point, actually. <laughs> Parents play a very, very good, important role here. Well, obviously not good enough, because they're not doing whatever is required with a three-month-old to keep them from developing the forbidden attitudes you describe. Oh, I, I don't think so. I think that parents know, like parents know what's good for their kids, right? Uh -huh. Parents know that you know if you teach kids about different kind of people, people of you know the storybooks about Chinese people, about African people, about American people, about Europeans. I think the more they know and the more they learn, the more they learn and and the more experience they have, and they have become worldly. I think parents like their kids to be worldly, right? Yeah, and no, I, I, I agree with that. It's just I guess. Again, having covered this stuff for many years, when you said, quote, at this point, I got a chill because I realized that I'm going to read your study in a New York Times piece 10 years from now, sort of desegregating daycare or requiring parents to give certain kinds of picture books to their kids. I mean, there's just literally no question about it. I hope people, I hope people do not take the, the message from our study in this way. I mean, this would be like, uh, you know, this, I don't think... People, reasonable people, reading these studies and reading these findings, say, "Hey, you know, government, you come in and take my babies away." I don't think so. I think the whole okay. idea is, is you know, experience is important and the diversity okay. of experience is very important for well, your kids' development. I, well, I definitely agree thank with you. that part of it. Dr. Kang, thanks a lot. Dr. Lee, thank you for joining. Thank us. you.